electronegativity, electron density, and polarity. Have you got it? This video will check your understanding of electronegativity and how it can be used when we're predicting bond and molecular polarity, and also your understanding of electron density and its relation to bonding and chemical reactivity. As always, this quiz is three questions. It's meant to be taken after you've studied and you think you understand the material. During the presentation, you should pause the video and at least try to solve the problems yourself and only then continue. It won't be hardly as effective if you jump to the solution immediately. Okay, here we go. Number one, without looking at a periodic table, copy this figure of a partial periodic table to a sheet of paper and fill in the missing elements. Circle all the elements that are more electronegative than carbon. Make the line thickness for the circles reflect the difference relative to carbon thicker for bigger differences in electronegativity. So pause the video, see how fast you can do that, give yourself a couple of minutes, and then come back to the video. I'll be waiting. All right, you're back. How'd you do? Going across the table, we have boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Below fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. If you don't know those, just learn them. It's not that hard. Under oxygen, we have sulfur, much stinkier than oxygen. Under nitrogen, we have phosphorus. Don't do a lot with phosphorus in chemistry, but we'll see that come in when we do some more bio-related chemistry, primarily. And below carbon is silicon. You might have heard about the possibility of silicon life forms or something like that, based on the fact that silicon is also tetrahedral, but it's actually not very much like carbon at all. What do you think about electronegativity? Well, nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon. Oxygen's even more electronegative than nitrogen. And fluorine over here is just, I can't make it super enough electronegative. Coming down from chlorine, we get chlorine, which because of its size and the diffusiveness of the electrons around it is not as electronegative as fluorine. Bromine, even bigger. And iodine, still electronegative, but not by much. It's much less electronegative, much larger than bromine, much larger chlorine, much, much, much larger than fluorine. So its electrons are pretty well dispersed around it. Sulfur, not quite so electronegative as oxygen or chlorine. Phosphorus, hardly electronegative at all. Uh, silicon, hardly negative, electronegative at all. And there you have it. That's pretty much the run of electronegativities on the periodic table. Okay, next question. In each case below, indicate the hybridization at the central atom, sp, sp2, or sp3, and the geometry at that center, linear, trigonal planar, trigonal pyramidal or tetrahedral. Mark all drawn bonds with bond polarity arrows and state whether the molecule overall is polar or nonpolar. Pause the video, take out a sheet of paper, see if you can do this. It'll take you a little bit of time, but it's worth it to go through this and make sure you've got this down. All righty, here we go. Hybridization. Central carbon here, four bonds to it. Got three sigma bonds. So three sigma bonds is S, P, P. Same thing over here. 
same thing over here because in this case it's boron it has three sigma bonds and that accounts for an s a p and a p and then there's a leftover p orbital coming out of this plane okay nitrogen here we go four bonds to it three are sigma so we know this is an sp2 here we go how about this carbon we've got a hydrogen and three other bonds so that's four bonds that's takes all of our s and p orbitals to do that sigma hybridization one two three and four and the same thing over here sp3 so we have mostly sp2 here and a couple of sp3 geometries well trigonal planar for all of these sp2s and for the sp3 we have tetrahedral now polar or nonpolar well let's look at this structure again we definitely have a dipole that oxygen is considerably more electronegative than the carbon and so electrons are being pulled toward the oxygen we have a partial minus here on the oxygen a partial plus on the carbon this guy is polar for sure uh, in the case of this uh, second one same thing here we have the carbon with the double bond but we also have carbon with a nitrogen and that's also a polar bond and they're sort of pointing off in the different directions but the key here is that they're not pointing off in opposite directions actually there's a there's a net dipole in this molecule which is basically in in this direction or so it would look from this diagram okay how about my boron with the three NH2 groups well here we have boron definitely less electronegative than nitrogen but here we have this trigonal planar geometry and uh, these are exactly canceling each other out so this guy is nonpolar down here well you can definitely see we've got a big dipole going this direction and you may not realize it at this moment but if we were to draw the resonance contributor of this compound we'd have the double bond over on the left and the O minus on the right so actually these dipoles are equal but they're not opposite and so even though there's a dipole here we still expect this to be a polar molecule in fact this is HNO3 which is an acid so it's very polar all right how about this dibromo compound here well we've got a dipole going out this way we've got a dipole going out this way and the molecule is polar and finally here's one where we have dipoles coming out in three directions so they seem to cancel but if you think about it it's tetrahedral so these are not actually canceling because the carbon has pulled up out of the plane and and these these bromines are, are not in the same plane so there's there's a net dipole in this direction from those three pulling out but also down there's a downward component of each of these dipoles so we have an overall net dipole and this guy is polar all right how'd you do one more okay here's a little challenge for you consider the electron density often shown as a heat map on a van der Waals surface where red is high electron density and blue is low we often call these a MEP or a molecular electrostatic potential map compare the map above for CH3CONH2 also known as acetamid with your answer to question two how do you explain the blue color around the nitrogen on the bottom right isn't nitrogen more electronegative than carbon what's going on here pause the video think of how you would answer those questions and then we'll get going again in a few minutes 
Okay, how are we going to explain this? Well, let's start with drawing our structure for a sediment. Now, if I were to ask you to draw a resonance contributor, you might draw something like this, where I simply take the electrons that are in the double bond and I assign them to the oxygen, okay? But also, the nitrogen has a lone pair there. Maybe what we could do is share that pair of electrons in its lone pair and produce a plus formal charge on the nitrogen. And I'm going to rewrite this right now just because I've been cutting a couple corners here with the H's out here because I'm going to talk about those in a second. All right, so if red is lots of electrons and blue is where electrons have been pulled away from the atoms, we have some hint of that in this resonance contributor. Now, I know this is not the most significant. If we were to say which of these is the most significant, we'd clearly say this first one we drew with no charges is the most significant. And yet, these other two are actually very helpful to us, and in particular, this one on the right here, because this structure gives us a clue what's going on with the electron density in the real molecule. What's happened is that all nitrogen is electronegative and draws electrons toward it. That lone pair has been shared with the system and basically shows up more significantly, more probably around the oxygen atom where we see this minus charge in our structure. And actually, the question was a little tricky because it's actually not the nitrogen that is blue. It's the hydrogen atoms here. It's these hydrogens out here that have had their electron density pulled away from through the system headed toward that oxygen. And there's a sort of a secondary effect. Nitrogen's lone pair is actually shared more than usually with the system to the oxygen. And the two hydrogens have their electron density also pulled away from them. And you'll see coming up here pretty soon that this is going to explain why this molecule over here is especially acidic, meaning we can pull these protons off that nitrogen relatively easily. OK, so there you go. Remember, most heteroatoms are more electronegative than carbon, with electronegativity increasing from carbon to nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine across the periodic table. Fluorine is by far the most electronegative atom on the periodic table. And remember that we need to have a sense of the 3D geometry of a molecule before we can assess whether it will be polar or not. On the left here, we have BF3. It's planar, it's nonpolar, and you really have to have a, that sense of 3D to appreciate that. On the right, we have ammonia, which is nonplanar. You can see that the nitrogen is not in the plane of those three hydrogen atoms. It's, it's offset some. We call that trigonal pyramidal, and it's really quite polar. And considering resonance contributors can give us a clue to the distribution of electron density in a molecule. Now we're going to see that electron density and thoughts about and thinking about electron density is a critical skill in organic chemistry. And to help us out here, drawing resonance contributors can be a terrific help when we're making predictions and explanations relating to acidity, basicity, and chemical reactivity in general. We'll be talking a lot more of this soon. One important thing to realize here is that sometimes it's the less significant resonance contributors that really give us the clues we need. So though they're less significant, they actually can be more informative. All right, well, I hope that helps, and I hope you've got it.